there are so many carbon compounds all around us you know paper wood plastic all these are carbon compounds and you know the variety of carbon compounds is also huge there are some carbon compounds called alkanes there are some other carbon compounds called alkenes alkynes carboxylic acids alcohols aldehydes there's a huge variety of carbon compounds you know and different different categories of carbon compounds of course you mustn't have heard of all these terms yet but we will study about all these varieties of carbon compounds and why carbon forms so many compounds in this chapter the name of this chapter is the versatile nature of carbon the word versatile actually means you know one person or one substance which can do many things at once if a writer can write he can direct films he can sing songs if he can act in that case he is a versatile person carbon forms so many compounds in so many different ways that it's called versatile let's learn more about the versatile nature of carbon here we go the first question that comes up is you know carbon forms so many compounds but why does only carbon form so many compounds oxygen sulfur nitrogen they don't form so many compounds why does carbon do so one amazing reason why carbon forms so many compounds millions and millions of them is catenation what is catenation catenation is the ability of carbon to form carbon carbon chains understood so you can see here that you know this carbon atom on the left is attached to this carbon atom this one is attached to another carbon atom which is attached to another carbon atom which is attached to yet another carbon atom in this manner carbon atoms can be attached to one another you know to form chains which have hundreds or even thousands of carbon atoms can you believe that here here is another example of a carbon atom chain so carbon has this special ability to form carbon carbon chains which go on and on and on and that is one important reason why carbon forms so many compounds you know other atoms like say silicon do not have the ability to form these chains because of the size of the atom it has been found by scientists that if an atom is small in size in that case it can form a large chain of atoms but if an atom is large in size in that case the chains formed by the atoms become unstable that is the reason say silicon or sulfur do not form you know so many extensive atom atom chains understood so one important reason why carbon forms so many compounds is catenation the ability of the carbon atom to form carbon carbon chains understood the second reason why carbon forms so many compounds is its tetravalency as we already know the valency of carbon is 4 so it can basically be attached to four atoms at once isn't it so now let's say four hydrogen atoms are attached to carbon now you know if we replace one of these hydrogen with fluorine we'll get another compound if we replace another hydrogen with fluorine we'll get a completely different compound if we replace three hydrogens with fluorine we'll get a completely different compound the point is that since carbon can form bonds with four different atoms you know a huge variety of carbon compounds can be formed by a very small number of other atoms if you take hydrogen fluorine chlorine bromine using only these atoms more than 100 compounds can be formed tens and tens of compounds can be formed you know by placing one bromine one fluorine and two hydrogens or by placing two bromines and two fluorines or by placing three fluorines and one chlorine you know using only three four atoms you can form a huge number of carbon compounds because of the tetravalency of carbon because of the fact that carbon has a valency of four it can be attached to four atoms understood so this is another reason why carbon forms so many compounds reason number 1 is catenation the ability of carbon to form carbon carbon chains reason number 2 is tetravalency there we go now generally you know the study of carbon compounds is called organic chemistry and you know many carbon compounds are in general called organic compounds so before we proceed further let's just understand what the word organic compound means the word organic means that which has been derived from an organism now earlier you know it was believed that carbon compounds are all derived from the human body after all you know 
the urine we secrete it's a carbon compound the food we eat is a carbon compound our skin is a carbon compound so it was believed that carbon compounds are you know present only in organisms now of course scientists have started synthesizing carbon compounds in laboratories as well so generally these days organic compounds refer to all the compounds of carbon on this earth except for some small exceptions like the oxides of carbon and carbonates and carbides so basically all the compounds of carbon except for the oxides of carbon the carbonates of carbon and the carbides of carbon are called organic compounds understood so basically most carbon compounds on this earth are termed organic compounds all the compounds that we'll study in this chapter are organic compounds understood so this term basically refers to carbon compounds organic compounds let's now move on and study some basic organic compounds well the first category of organic compounds that we'll study is hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are carbon compounds that have only carbon and hydrogen understood so you can see carbon forms so many compounds with hydrogen that a special name has been given to carbon hydrogen compounds hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are of two types saturated hydrocarbons and unsaturated hydrocarbons we'll study about all this very soon so don't worry about these terms yet this figure that you see on your screen represents the electron dot structure of methane you already know that methane is ch4 it is carbon surrounded by four hydrogen atoms methane is the simplest possible hydrocarbon on this earth understood that's because it has just one carbon atom and as we already know carbon needs four electrons and four hydrogen atoms share their four electrons and provide carbon with the required four electrons understood so this is the structure of methane this structure you know the electron dot structure is sometimes very complicated to represent so we also represent the structure of methane by this diagram you see on the right understood as you can see we have replaced each electron pair by a single bond so methane has four carbon hydrogen single bonds as you can clearly see isn't it so this is the structure of methane what is the next simplest hydrocarbon well the next simplest hydrocarbon is c2h6 or ethane this is the electron dot structure of ethane i know it sounds complicated but it's actually quite simple you see methane has one carbon atom ethane has two the difference you know between ethane and methane is that each carbon atom in ethane is bonded to one other carbon atom and three other hydrogen atoms understood see carbon requires four electrons isn't it so three hydrogens share their electrons with carbon and one other carbon atom shares its electron with carbon understood so basically one carbon atom here is surrounded by three hydrogens and one other carbon atom this is the structure of ethane as you can see since there are six hydrogen atoms and two carbon atoms the formula for ethane is c2h6 this is the structure of ethane as you can see ethane has one carbon carbon single bond and it has six carbon hydrogen single bonds understood carbon surrounded by three hydrogens and one other carbon atom this is ethane for you now can you yourself predict you know what the structure of the next possible hydrocarbon will be the next more complicated hydrocarbon well the next hydrocarbon is c3h8 or propane this is the structure of propane can you see what we've done we've simply added one more carbon atom you know to the carbon chain methane had one carbon atom ethane had two and now this third carbon compound is propane it has three carbon atoms in this case again you know we've just uh, put three carbon atoms in a chain and then we've added hydrogen atoms depending on the valency of carbon that is four you see the first carbon has three hydrogens attached to it the second carbon has just two hydrogens attached to it because it has one carbon on either side so it gets shared electrons from two carbons already so it only needs two more electrons and so it needs only two hydrogen bonds understood so it has two hydrogens the third carbon again has three hydrogen atoms what is important 
is that the valency of carbon is 4 in each case. If you have to draw the structure of any you know hydrocarbon with say 3 carbons or 4 carbons or 5 carbons, simply draw a carbon chain and then you know fulfill the valency of carbon. Understood? Make sure that carbon has 4 bonds. Carbon will always have 4 bonds because its valency is 4. So that's the simple rule to draw the structure of a hydrocarbon. You can see that the first carbon has 3 hydrogen atoms, second 2 and third has 3 hydrogen atoms. So C3H8 is propane. You must remember this name. What about the next more complicated organic compound? You know the next hydrocarbon? The next hydrocarbon is called butane. Again, all that we have done is that we've added yet another carbon to the chain. Isn't it? Propane had three carbon atoms. We've added one more carbon atom here. Of course, all the bonds in butane are also single bonds. And again, you can see that the valency of carbon is four in each case. Isn't it? Carbon has four bonds. All the carbons in butane also have four bonds. The first carbon has three hydrogen atoms and it is attached to one carbon atom. The second and third carbon are both attached to two carbon atoms and two hydrogen atoms. The fourth carbon atom has three hydrogens attached to it. So basically we've drawn a carbon chain and we fulfilled the valency of carbon. Understood? So that's the structure of butane for you. Now this is a series of hydrocarbons, isn't it? We're just increasing the number of carbon atoms in the chain and we're seeing that we're getting different compounds. We had methane, ethane, propane and now with four carbon atoms we have butane. Now all these carbon compounds, you know, that we've studied till now un come under a special category called alkanes. Understood? So methane, butane, propane, ethane, all are alkanes. As you can see, CH4, C2H6, C3H8, C4H10, these are alkanes. One fascinating fact that you must remember is the formula of alkanes. The chemical formula of alkanes is CN, H2N plus 2. This is an important formula. N here represents the number of carbon atoms. Take a look at the formula of methane. Methane has one carbon atom. So its formula is C1, H2 into 1 plus 2. That is CH4. Ethane has two carbon atoms. So its formula is C2, H2 into 2 plus 2. That is H6. Propane has the formula C3H8, C3H2 into 3 plus 2, that is C3H8. So all alkanes have the chemical formula CnH2n plus 2. Another important fact is that alkanes are also called saturated hydrocarbons. You see they are hydrocarbons which do not have any double bond. Hydrocarbons which have only single bonds in them and which do not have any double bond are called saturated hydrocarbons. Understood? Carbon-carbon single bond is present in alkanes. As you can see, the names of all alkanes end in ane, A-N-E. So we have methane, ethane, propane, butane and so on. The name always ends in ane. Understood? So this is what alkanes are all about. Alkanes are hydrocarbons with the standard formula CnH2n plus 2. They have a single carbon-carbon bond and they are saturated hydrocarbons. What will happen, you know, if an alkane has five carbon atoms, then it will be called pentane. An alkane with six carbon atoms will be hexane. Then you get heptane, octane, nonane, decane. All these might seem very difficult, but don't worry. You don't have to remember all the names, but basically all the alkanes have ane in them. Understood? That's what you must remember. Here's a look at pentane, C5H12. As you can see, it has five carbon atoms. Pentane, that's the name here. Again, there are only single bonds. Here's hexane. As you can see, the formula for hexane is C6H2 into 6 plus 2. 2 into 6 is 12 and 2 into 6 plus 2 is 14. So the formula for hexane is C6H14. This is hexane for you. Again, there are only carbon-carbon single bonds. So that was the first category of hydrocarbons. It's called alkanes. Understood? Let's now move on to the second category of hydrocarbons. 